Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. The presence of the Lord that I feel. Yes. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. Like what Brother Keith just said a minute ago, that I don't want to take it for granted. Amen. I think too many times, in fact, I'll back up and say it like this. I know way too often we do take it for granted. And a lot of times we get in a rut yes. in our Pentecostal churches, not saying you all are like that. Um, we haven't been here in some time, so we certainly don't know uh, what you all are like. But as a whole, our Pentecostal churches have gotten to the place where we're in a rut, I believe, and we have lost our grip on the depth and the magnitude of the work of Calvary. Yes. And I believe that what we need to do is get a hold of that measure again. Yes. Yes. If we do that, we wouldn't have to fake it anymore and we could start to love our neighbor across the aisle again. Yes. Even if it is Brother Bob Rodman. Yes. Amen. Amen. But really, how many churches are full of people today that profess the game but don't possess the goods? And they just go through the motions. I think there'll be a sad day for those if they don't get a hold of this thing again. If you would, would stand with me. The depth of the work of Calvary is a marvelous thing. If you think about it, I was talking to our pastor a few weeks ago Right around Easter, I believe it was, and I said, Brother Larry, I said, uh, you know, if you really think about it, what was accomplished at Calvary when God, our Heavenly Father, sent His only Son to die? God could have done it Himself, but that would have left Him a mere martyr. There's not a one of us in here today, I don't believe, that would not take a bullet or offer our life for our child. Amen. But how many of us would be willing to lay down that thing that is most precious to us, offer our child in the place for a stranger? Amen. That's a whole different game. And that work that God did in sending that that was most precious to him and his only son, Jesus Christ, if we could just realize that, we could start this all over and be what we ought to be as Christians. Hallelujah. Turn me to the book of Job, if you would. I'll try not to be lengthy. I'd rather leave you longing than loathing. But I'd like to give you something today that might be an encouragement to us. Job chapter 14. you have it, say amen. amen. Job says in verse number 17, my transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up mine iniquity. My transgression, my sin, Everything that is wrong or has been wrong with me and displeasing in the eyes of a holy God is sealed up in a bag and thou sowest up my iniquity. Amen. We need to be reminded as it is the case in this word, you can be seated if you'd like, just how far-reaching the depth and the magnitude of Calvary is. The work that Calvary produced. We can relate to Job's words here in the bag. A bag is something that we can carry things in, stow our stuff in. Uh, and so too, if you look at it in a spiritual sense, so too does the Lord do that for us. 
as Job has given us or revealed to us that very real fact. And I feel led to preach for just a few minutes today on the bag, a book, and a bottle. A bag, a book, and a bottle. He said, a bag was for my transgressions. Hallelujah. My transgression is sealed up in a bag. A bag is a useful tool. We can put tools in it. We can carry our lunch in it. We have duffel bags, travel bags, sleeping bags, and everything else, and we even have trash bags. Bags for a refuse, bags for things that are of no value, the invaluable things, the things that we want to get rid of. I'm reminded of a story that is true that some years ago a seaside town had a problem with a rat infestation. So the order of the mayor was to gather all the cats that you could up, we'll turn them loose in the town and we'll eradicate the problem. It was all good and well for just a little while, but before long, the rats were gone, and the town was overrun with feral cats. Anybody ever have any problem with feral cats? We have a big problem with them in Florida. They're all over the place. They'll ruin your car. They'll ruin your house. They spray everything, destroy things, and so a lot of times, they'll, they'll do whatever they can to try to eradicate them. And so it was in this seaside town. They, they said, we'll get them gathered together. And so what they did was they trapped them. They did everything they could to get them corralled and caught. And then they would take them and put them in a bag and tie them up, tie a stone to it to weigh it down and throw it into the sea. And that's how they got rid of them. And that's uh, a kind of like uh, what Job's talking about here where he said, his fix was, his, his, the thing that repaired his problem was there was a bag for my transgression. Hallelujah. There was a bag. A, my transgression, he said, is sealed in a bag. My transgressions, whoa, wait a minute. I need to back up and say this. Was not Job the one that was guilty of the crime? Was he not the one that was guilty of uh, 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 the, the, the sin and the transgressor. Was he not the transgressor? Yes, he was, but yet Job was not the one that paid the price for the transgression. He was not the one that had to pay. Brother, we, we were wicked. We, you and I, we were the ones that were worthy to be tried. We were the ones to be worth, that were worthy to die for the transgressions in our lives. We're worthy to be condemned. But brother, the fact of the matter is that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stepped forward one day a propitiation for my and your sin and he paid the penalty hallelujah glory to God it wasn't me that had to do it no 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 Jesus Christ did and in that work of Calvary he bagged up my sin bagged up my transgression he bagged up our iniquity and the Bible tells us that he cast him into the sea glory to God Oh, hallelujah. No wonder Job said there is a bag for my transgression. Hallelujah. Calvary, the scene of that, that day, it's horrifying when you think about how he was beaten beyond recognition whipped till the meat hung off his body had to bear his own cross until he fell under it and then there you know nailed to the cross dropped in the ground and hung there despised and rejected by humanity what a terrible thing to see or envision the son of God that did nothing but love us hanging on a tree a tree despised by all humanity brother Oh, but when we see the purpose, if we just envision the purpose of that horrible day, then we could see and realize the depth of this washing away of the sin. Ah, oh, hallelujah. And that, that reason to condemn us, yet he saved us apart from that 
condemnation, brother. What did he do? I'll tell you exactly what he did. When he hung on that cross and he shed and bled, oh, hallelujah, he stripped the sin from us, tied our sin in a bag, cast it into the sea, and saved us apart from the sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands and praise him. Glory to God. He could have condemned me for my sin, but he did not do that. He had the power to separate the sin from the transgressor and save the transgressor and he remove and eliminate the transgression. Hallelujah. If you can see that, if we can see that, brother, we will find that Calvary is nothing less than a bag. Hallelujah. Just like with the feral cat, it is a bag to tie the transgressions in and remove them far from us. Amen. I like the Sunday school class this morning. Amen. And not to make it complicated, we are in a partnership with God. Yes, Amen. Yeah, I know the Lord does it. The Holy Ghost does the work. But so do we in a part. He said, let us come together and reason together. Amen. Another scripture says uh, uh, that we need to uh, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfect and hold us in the fear of God. Now, is that to say that I can cleanse myself and save myself? No, it does not say that. But what the Lord is saying in that text is this. If you'll put away the iniquity, then I'll wash away the sin and every guilty stain. And if you walk in that, we can walk together because we'll be agreed. Glory to God. And not only that, brother, oh, but Micah tells us, oh, glory to God, in Micah chapter 7 and verse number 19, he will turn again and he will, amen, have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. Hallelujah. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sin into the depth of the sea. <laughs> I reminded of a story. Uh, I think it was a town drunk that got saved. Simple-minded guy. And he was just very jubilant. Very emotional. And it was kind of a uppity town church, starch collar type. And they just kind of, you know, just let him do his thing. But he'd get shouting and be glory to God and hallelujahs. They'd sing a song, he'd run an aisle. They'd preach something and he'd jump up and shout hallelujah. But then they had a convocation coming up. And the, the district overseer was coming to say, we're going to have to do something about brother so-and-so. You know how he does. He might embarrass us when that man's here. So they said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll tell him he's going to watch over such and such you know, room downstairs and we'll just put him aside like that and we'll wait till the service is over and then we'll let him back out and everything will be all right. <laughs> well, they did and they were about halfway through the song service after introducing the district overseer and all of a sudden they heard, Glory to God! Hallelujah! <laughs> what in the world is going on? Well, they started in again and all of a sudden, glory, glory, glory. Would somebody please run down there and find out what's going out, going on with so-and-so. So they ran down there and they pulled him aside and said, what in the world are you doing, man? He said, I just picked up this here. Uh, what, what was that magazine? I don't know. They, it wasn't history magazine. It was I don't know, one of those world magazines, National Geographic, I think that's what it was. He said, I picked up this magazine over here, and he said, I got reading in that thing. He said, and I read where the Mariana Trench was 36,000 feet deep. 
How something like that. He said, I got to thinking about that scripture, how that the Lord cast my iniquities in the depth of the sea when I realized how far removed they were. He said, I couldn't help myself anymore. He said, I had to jump up and give glory to God. And that's what I'm telling us today is we need to get a grip on just how far reaching the work of Calvary was when it removed our sins so far away that he would not remember them against us anymore. As long as we keep the partnership. No wonder John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, that my God of glory, that taketh away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not only back, but so too there is a book. Oh, what's that book for, preacher? It's for my name. For my name. I mean, knows that there's a new name written down in glory. I used to think about that when I was a child. Lord, why would you give us a new name? And one day it dawned on me. We have an accuser. His name is Satan. There's going to come a time he'll probably accuse us when the Lord wants to bring us into his glory world. No, 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 wait a minute. They were guilty of this. So-and-so was guilty of that. And he opens his book up. And he says, I don't find that name here. Amen. That's why we've got a new one. Because we're now guilt-free. Hallelujah. Not all the sin is gone, but every guilty stain. Glory to God. Now that that doesn't want to make you shout, I wonder if we had to call the paramedics in. Bless God Almighty. There's a reason to give glory to God. He's got a book for our name. The Lord could have just left us with a bag, but instead he recorded what he did. <laughs> yeah, I washed your sins away, but let me write it down. Just so it's there forever to be read, to be recited, to be brought up. Hallelujah. The judgment seat of Christ, yes. I find that name. She's mine. What about, yeah, yeah, it's right here. He's there too. Glory to God. A book. Oh, David said in Psalms 139, he said, Oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. In thy book, all my members were written. Hallelujah. I remember a few years ago, seemed like just yesterday, but back in the middle of the summer, on a warm summer night in the middle of July, 1981, it seemed like my life was all a wreck. Was you in that bad of sin? No. I was raised in church from the time I was a week old. Been in church a long time now. I've been in Pentecost since 1965. Oh, bless God Almighty. You know, I, I got a little bit rebellious as a teenager, backed off on the Lord, but came back to him. Amen. In the middle of 1981, on a hot July night, seemed like I wasn't going anywhere, treading water, spinning my wheels. And you know, I never had any bad sin, never desired sin, never became a drunkard, never drank, never did none of those things. Well, what in the world was a going on then? There was something inside of me that was missing. Hallelujah. It was not the sin that had me crushed down, but it was the awareness that I did not have him as my Lord. Are you hearing me? There was a separation there. There was a division there. There was an emptiness there. There was a void in my heart that needed to be filled. And I slipped out of my bed in the middle of the night 
and I wept and I cried and I called out to God and I said, Lord, if you'll save me again, I'll give my life to you. And there in the middle of the night, bless God Almighty, the work of Calvary 2,000 years ago reached across the expanse of time and saved me in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. We read in the book of Luke, 10th chapter, that Jesus had appointed 70 to go out two by two. You know the story. They came back some time later rejoicing how the devils even had subject unto them. You remember the story? Jesus let them rejoice for a little while. Then after everything settled down, I would imagine, he said this. I beheld Satan fall from heaven. And I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. But in this rejoice not, he said, but nevertheless rejoice because your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Now if my Lord considers that a weightier matter than the power over all the power of the enemy, then that tells me that I better get back to the place where I get a hold of the depth of the work of Calvary. It's that great. It's that great. It's that marvelous. So there's a bag and a book. I thought you could shout on that one. Sins are gone. I got a name in his book. That night in 1981, maybe I can make it more real. How many saved? And you know you are. That night in 1981 where I slid out of my bed, Brother Keith, I can almost envision a nail-scarred hand reaching forward and picking up a pen and dipping it in blood and writing my name in his hall of records. Woo! Glory! Bless God Almighty, there ain't a devil in hell that can strip me of that memory. And my God of glory, it's real. It's real. My God, I know he's real. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. I could shout, preacher, but I have some hard things that I go through. Hard times. Troubles. Trials. Oh, yeah. We'll have some. Just try pastoring. You'll have some. I'm not speaking for Brother Keith, but I, I pastored for a while, and I had some. Glory to God. And I know we have some just everything, every, everyday life, just life on this side of forever Amen. is going to be a hard time at times. Amen. And there'll be times where you feel like everything is just crashing in Amen. to the point where it feels like it's suffocating you and you're, it's crushing you under the weight. Yes. At times you'll feel like you have no friend in the world. And you'll get alone, you're still alone, and try to get down and pray. And even at times you feel like you cannot feel God. And you wonder if God's even there or does he even care. And you'll weep and you'll cry. But I've got good news for you. That in the middle of our weeping, in the middle of our tears, the Lord sees and he hears our cry. Hallelujah. Oh, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 56 and verse number 8, Thou tell us of my wanderings, the battles, the hard times, the hard places, the crying, the weeping, the heartbreaks, and the heartaches. But David said, put my tears 
in thy bottle? Are they not recorded in thy book? Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Are you not recording that you cherish my tears? Oh, God, what a holy God we have. In other words, all the tears that you and I have ever cried, they are recorded and they are kept and they are cherished. Hallelujah. You know, it's customary in some countries over in the Middle East that when a loved one dies, during the funeral procession at some point, they'll come and they'll wipe the tears of the mourners with a, a kerchief or some kind of thing. And then they'll wring that out and gather it into a bottle and then place the bottle in the tomb with that departed loved one. Their belief is it lets that departed loved one know that they cherished them so much that they gathered their tears to let the tears go of their departed loved one. How much more does our heavenly Father love us and cherish the tears that we have shed down through the years? Hallelujah. Don't let anybody ever tell you that God does not care about what you weep over. I, I, come on now. Don't ever let anybody lie to you and tell you that you do not have a heavenly father that has an arm that is not short, that he cannot save, and an ear that is stopped up that he cannot hear. He is a God that loves us and loves us so much that he sent his son. So he's certainly going to cherish your tears. Oh, the tears that we cry. How much he cherishes the tears of his children. A preacher friend of mine some years ago was preaching a meeting in Mississippi. He got a phone call. On the other end of the line, he heard this little voice, a girl, a lady. She said, uh, I, Brother Kid, she said, I'm so and so. Do you? Recall, he said, Yeah, I remember you. She said, When you were preaching in Detroit, yeah, 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 I remember. I remember you. She said, I remember how I felt the Holy Ghost in that meeting. He said, Yeah. She said, I've got to tell you. She said, I'm a junkie, drug addict, heroin addict. She said, I was, I haven't placed anywhere that I can inject myself, so I inject the heroin into my finger. She said, I had no place left on me that would take it. She said, but it was a, hyperderm a dirty hypodermic that I had picked up out of a garbage can. Got gangrene, lost a finger in my hand. She says, as a result of the drugs that were in my body, I had gotten pregnant, had a baby, lost the baby. She said, I was so spaced out of my mind. The CYS came and took that dead infant and buried my baby, and I didn't even see the funeral of my own baby. She said, tonight, she said, I picked up a dirty needle, and I'm dying of AIDS. She said, and I want to come and be in the meeting where the Holy Ghost is one more time. Told her, he said, I told her where she was, where I was at, where I was holding me. That was on a Sunday. She sold her body all day Sunday, all Sunday night. Started out on the road on a Monday morning, drove all Monday through the night, all day Tuesday. Tuesday night, she came through the back door. He said, I saw her. He said, I recognized her, but she really had gone downhill from being the drug abuse, and the AIDS, no doubt. He said, she saw me, and she cut tracks right over to where I was at. She said, preacher, she said, can you tell me one thing? He said, what's that? 
She said, is there still hope for an old, dirty, junky harlot like me? He said, I preached to her that night. Wednesday night, never stirred. Thursday night, and then on Friday night, he said, I was preaching. He said, I took from my text, and I preached the message. The worth of your soul. When I think about that statement, and I think about the fact that he sent that that was most precious to him to die in my place, the worth of your soul. He said, I preached. He said, and about midway through the sermon, she came up out of that pew like a shotgun, ran and dove into the altar, and wept and cried, and cried and wept, sobbing. He said, 35, 40, 45 minutes, she cried. He said, and then all of a sudden, she rocked back onto her heels. He said she was a mess. Her face was all smudged up. The makeup was running down her chin. He said mascara never looked so good. Her shirt was soaked. And there was a pool where the tears have run onto the altar. He said she glanced over at me. And I yelled over, how is it with your soul? She smiled and looked up toward the heavens. And she said, I want you to know and everybody in this place to know that there's still a fountain filled with blood flowing from Emmanuel's veins. And if sinners plunge beneath the flood, they'll lose all their guilty stains. Hallelujah. Bless God Almighty. He's got a bag for my sin. He's got a book for my name. And he's got a bottle for my tears. Hallelujah. Woo! Go ahead and praise him. <laughs> Woo! Why, you just know he bottles those tears. You just know he does. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can stand across this building. I'm about done. Did you ever think about, is, is it possible that when we walk on the other side of the Jordan and thrust that old sword in the sand and the Lord meets us there and as the Bible said, you wash away our tears. Is it just possible that he'll gather those tears those last tears and put them in that bottle and put them in his chamber just to remind us we'll sorrow no more. <laughs> Glory. Are you beginning to get the vision of just how great, how deep, how far-reaching Calvary really is and exactly why he had to send his son to die huh? my God of glory I pray Lord help me all with the rest of my life to realize that depth and to really 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 real get down to business and live for you the way I ought to as a Christian that loves everybody and loves my Lord and wants to do everything I can to lift high his holy name and let this world know that he died for them too. And because he lives, you can live also. A bag. Sin's gone. A book. 
They described your name down here in the bottle for those cherished tears, your tears. That's how much he loves you. Oh, God. I love him. More. That, now, that makes me love him all the more. Glory to God. While they sing, how about we really establish this relationship like it ought to be? No wonder David cried, put mine in your bottle. Put mine in thy bottle and remind me of every time you heard me when I cried. Glory to God. While they're saying, neither silver nor gold I would make sure
Yes, my name's written there. 
access is there to claim. Some would give their very souls to reach your highest plane, but to count it gain would be my loss. If I lay down commitments cross, so lift my eyes to things above. I serve him with a heart of love. I just want to please my Lord. Be in his will in every way. I want to get lost in his presence. want to please my Lord. Be in his will in every way. Lost in his presence, found in his likeness, hear him say, at my fingertips I had arrived at last but the cry could not be pacified of a heart about to break inside till Jesus showed himself to me he said just look what you could be just want to please my enjoyed it this morning? Yeah. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to have my wife come up this time. And we have a baby dedication. Amen. Yeah. We're going to ask my father-in-law, my mother-in-law to come up. Yeah. And they're going to they're going to pray over us this morning. I just want to read a little bit. Samuel, a very familiar portion of scripture. Now there was a certain man of Ramazophim of Mount Ephraim. His name was Elkanah, son of Jer Jehoram, Jeroam, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, son of Zuf, an Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, the name of the other, Peninnah. And then I had children, but Hannah had no children. So she's grieving over this, if you recall. And she made a petition before the Lord. And her adversary, verse 6 tells us, provoked her sore for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, and therefore she wept. But God heard. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat on the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed until the Lord 
and she wept sore and vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. It came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli, Eli heard her mouth. Eli answered down verse 17, <clears throat> said, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition. Thou ask, as ask of him. They rose up in the morning early, worshiped before the Lord, and returned, came to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. I'm skipping down to verse 24. And when she had weaned him, she looked him, or took him up with her, and three bullocks, an ephah flour, a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. They slew a bullock, brought it to, or brought the child to Eli, and she said, O oh, my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so with that, I'm going to dedicate this baby, precious, another precious life to the Lord. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we come humbly before the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful and beautiful, precious gift from God that you have blessed not only this family with, but this church as well. We ask God of heaven that you give Brother Keith and Sister Angel the wisdom, the strength, the knowledge, the insight and foresight. Lead them, O oh God, by your spirit to raise this child in the right ways of God. Keep him safe, strong and healthy, and them as well. It will be certain to give you the glory and the praise for everything that is accomplished in and through this small ministry as these parents have with this child in, their, in those, his raising. In Jesus' holy, wonderful, and matchless name we pray. Amen. dismiss after that. Just shake hands and be friendly. Amen. Amen. <laughs>